Hallo Leute, ich bin Katja und ihr seht Deutsch für euch. I figured it was time for another trivia episode to keep things mixed up a bit. So today I'm going to talk about the German school system, especially in comparison to the American school system because I know a thing or two about that one. Um, I'm not too well educated on the British school system. I know a few things, but I'm, um, I'm going to keep it mostly in comparison to the American system, also because it's a much bigger difference. So that's going to be our topic for today. I have set up yet another chart and I hope that will... Um, help you understand the mess that is the German school system. Enjoy! We start with something that you're probably already familiar with, Kindergarten. In Germany you can send your child to Kindergarten from age 3 up to the age of 5. It's optional but recommended, since kids start to learn about interacting with other children and also adults that are not their parents. And also of course it has sort of a daycare function. It's not really about preparing kids for school on a knowledge level, but more on a social one if at all. And uh, basically, it's a great opportunity to get in touch with other kids and ways to play that they might not know about yet. Um, kindergarten comes with a fee, but the amount of that is decided by the community the kindergarten belongs to. After this, kids start Grundschule, which literally means ground school and is, of course, the equivalent to elementary school. It normally involves years 1 through 4, although there are 2 or 3 federal states that have a 1 through 6 system. Kids are divided into classes that they stay with for all periods. They also have a set classroom, which means that the teachers change rooms after each period. The only exception comes in for um, PE, or sports, for which classes are often mixed, but only within one grade. So starting at second grade, um, grading comes into the mix. Now, the German grading system is a bit different from the American one. We use numbers instead of letters, namely the numbers from 1 through 6. 1 through 4 are the passing grade uh, grades, which means 5 is a fail. You might notice this is the same scale as in the American system. Now, you might wonder what the 6 is for. It's not entirely clear to me either, but I think it's for differentiating between failing and just not having a clue at all. In between these numbers, there are quarter steps. For example, between a 1 and a 2, there are a 1 minus, which is like 1.25, a 1 to 2, which is a 1.5, and a 2 plus, which is a 1.75. The grades 1 plus and 6 minus are normally not used. On report cards in the end of the year, quarter and half grades are not used, which means if your average is below a 0.5, you round down, which means a better grade, and if you are at a 0.5 or above, you round up, which means a worse grade. We also get report cards at the end of each semester, although that's purely for informational purposes. And these only quarter grades get rounded up or down to the next half or whole grade. The grading at second grade level is very mild, and the kids only get grades for math and German since su subjects aren't really taught perfectly separately before third grade. After Grundschule, there are three schools a child can go to or be sent to. Some federal states have the parents decide what school their child should go to, others let the elementary schools give out re recommendations. Although it has to be said that these rec recommendations can be rather hard to object for parents. If you have a problem with the recommendation and the school sticks to their decision, your child might end up having to take an additional evaluation test, which is pretty hard to pass. Now, if the parents decide what school to go to, the next step becomes unnecessary, of course, but let's just assume we're in the system in which the school decides. If your average at the end of the fourth grade is between a 3 and a 4 or worse, although that's hard to achieve in elementary, so if that's the case, you would be sent to Hauptschule. This literally means main school, which can be explained by the fact that this used to be the standard school level until a few decades ago. Nowadays its reputation has taken quite a few blows, but that's a different story. Hauptschule consists of years 5 through 9, in some cases 10, and teaches at a relatively low level. The schedules also involve subjects such as home economics and shop, so basically hands-on material. After finishing Hauptschule, you can either start an apprenticeship or continue your education. The next level, so to speak, is Realschule. This is the school you would be sent to with an average between sec uh, sorry, between two and three at the end of fourth grade. Realschule involves years five through ten. At the end of it, your education level is comparable to a high school diploma in the US. 
We call it mittlere Reife, so literally middle maturity. It's hard to explain, it's basically just a term for your diploma after five years of secondary school. After Realschule, you can also either um, enter into an apprenticeship with more options than with a diploma from a Hauptschule, or you can continue your education. Okay, deep breath, the most difficult is yet to come. If after fourth grade, your average is between a one and a two, you get sent to gymnasium. This has nothing to do with the English meaning of gymnasium, by the way. Thank God, a school only consisting of sports would have killed me. Gymnasium pretty much consists of two stages. There are years five through ten, and then there's the Oberstufe, which means upper level. These last two years are really different than the ones before for a few reasons, but let's go one step at a time. One more important thing is that until a few years ago, all federal states consistently had a gymnasium with nine years, so years five through 13, not 12. In some federal states, this was changed to an eight-year system called G8, which is short for Gymnasium 8 Jahre in comparison to G9, so nine years. I will explain the rest with the nine-year system because frankly G8 doesn't make sense, nor does it work with other parameters there are within the curriculum, etc. Also, it might get changed back soon. You never really know exactly what's going on with school politics here. So basically, just so you know, you might get, get different answers to the question how many years of school there are in Germany, depending on the federal state the person explaining it to you is from. Okay, now, continuing with the Genoin system. After year 11, you're a bit above US high school level, so now you can either quit school and get an apprenticeship, or go to a Fachhochschule, which is a lot like college. It still has school-like structures, but it's a bit more like uni already. Also, it's designed to prepare you for a specific field or profession. If you don't quit after year 11, which is the normal thing to do if you stayed in gymnasium up to this point, you enter into the Oberstufe. A few things change at this point, as I've mentioned. First of all, the grading system gets changed. The grades are still numbers, but they now range from 0 to 15, the passing grades being 15 to 5, which means the lower numbers are now worse than the higher ones. So a 0 equals a 6 in the old system, while a 14 equals a 1, making a 15 a 1+. plus. Instead of quarter steps, the difference between each number is now a third of a grade in the old system. So a 13 is a 1.3 and a 12 is a 1.6, making 11 the equal to um, a 2 in the old system. A minor difference is that, unlike in all the years before this, students now change classrooms depending on what subject they are attending and are also mixed with different people for each subject. So there are no set classes anymore as there are until grade 11. Teachers still change rooms as well though. They don't have their own classrooms but they keep the material etc. in the Lehrerzimmer, the teacher's room. Another difference is that now the report cards after each semester do count and are no longer pure information. The two final years are counted as an entirety, which is divided into four semesters. All points earned during these final two years are counted together at the end, adding in the grades of the final exams, which we call the Abitur. The rules for what subjects to pick, how many points to reach and how many final exams to take differ from every federal state to another, since school is a federal matter, not a national one, but one thing stays the same everywhere, the Abitur consists of several written and one oral exam. These grades are multiplied and then added to the score that's been assembled over the past three and a half semesters. When all points have been added together, the final amount is then converted back into the old grading system, meaning that in the theoretical case that a student would come out with nothing but 14 or 15 points in every test, oral grade, exam and what have you, their Abitur grade would be 1.0. I'm sure your head's spinning right now and I can't blame you. Just imagine that if you actually do want to go to school in Germany, you'll have to be aware of all of this, plus the individual regulations of the federal state you live in. If you pass the Abitur, you will be at a level that is comparable to the end of the second year of an American college. Or, for the Brits out there, it's regarded as the same stage as your A-levels. I've been told that at some American colleges, they actually accept an A-level diploma to the extent that you can go straight to third year instead of first when starting. But let's go back to Germany. After the Abitur, of course you have all the options I've mentioned before, plus you are now qualified to go to a Universität, so a university. We used to have a university diploma unique to Germany, but after a reform a few years ago, it was replaced by the bachelor master system for most subjects. It was a bit awkward to combine with the existing systems, but as a result, the BA subjects are now a bit more school-like. Not as much as at a college, but definitely a lot more than what German university used to be like. Some subjects do, however, still use an old system. 
One more important thing is that university is pretty much free. There are some fees that have to be paid each semester, but they normally don't exceed 200 euros. Most of the time, they're more around 100. We used to have higher fees until last October, but that was only introduced a few years prior and they managed to get rid of that again after adapting to the, to the BA system. Now I left out one more thing. After Hauptschule or Realschule, if you decide to keep studying, you can either try to enter into a gymnasium, although that is rather hard to do, or you can go to a Realgymnasium. They normally don't have classes below grade 9, since it doesn't really make sense to send your kid to one of these right away. From class 9, they follow the same system as regular gymnasium, and they have one perk. They were excluded from the whole G8 deal, so they've always had years 9 through 13. At the end of one of these, you will also have uh, an abitur, but with an emphasis on a certain field. There are schools that specialize in economics, for example, others put an emphasis on IT and or technical subjects, etc. After passing one of these, you will also be qualified to go to university. So summing up, school in Germany is a lot cheaper than in the US and currently still leaves you with a better education. It has, however, been a big mess for the last 10 years or so and that probably won't change all too soon. If I left you completely confused or if you have any questions that you feel went unanswered, feel free to ask. Um, it's a big, big topic. I try to cover all the important things, but um, I'm pretty sure I've missed some things that would have been interesting that I just, you know, overlooked. Um, yeah, so if this interests you, feel free to ask. Okay, and that's it for today. Your random word of the week is... Nagelfeile. Bis nächste Woche. Tschüss.